I am John DeVore, welcome to the channel. Today's a music review of a very specific album that is a pretty common one, and uh, but maybe overlooked. One that I've seen copies of um, quite often. It's a record that actually, so this, um, so the record is Bach, Arias, Marian Anderson. Uh, the first side of this is all Bach from uh, cantatas and from one of the Passions. And then the second side of it uh, is Bach and Mendelssohn and Handel. Uh, There's an excerpt from Handel's Messiah. But they're all uh, beautiful arias sung beautifully by Marian Anderson. Marian Anderson is one of the most remarkable and spectacular voices uh, ever. She is, she's been classified as a contralto, which is the rarest, uh, in classical music, it's the rarest of the female voice, vocal range. Uh, and, it, and it indicates the lowest female vocal range. But Marian Anderson was actually able to sing and reach uh, the full width uh, of, a, of a soprano as well. So she had an incredible range, vocal range, incredible power, exquisite control, uh, and just a really beautiful timbre, a sweet but powerful timbre. Uh, just absolutely one of the most uh, incredible voices of all time. If When you listen to something like this, so this record is made of a recording that was originally uh, released in the 40s. So this was released as a book of three, I believe it was 378s. Um, and then this is a re-release. And it's a very, it's a common re-release. I've seen this in a lot of stores, sometimes even in the discount bin. Um, absolutely, it, it's a steal. The music is, is astounding and it sounds great. Um, this is, so because it's a reissue of a 78 era recording, um, this is on RCA Victor, it's, it's a shaded dog. Uh, but this is on the treasury of immortal performances. And then they have a little uh, disclaimer. The collector's issue label designates a recording of great historical and musical interest, which, although technically not representative of RCA Victor's present day high quality standards, has been reissued in response to widespread public demand. Uh, fair enough. But it is, it is beautiful. Um, I also have this on 78s. Uh, two of my 78s are pretty scuffy. The uh, third is, is in good shape. Uh, but this copy that I have of the, uh, of the mono LP is in good shape. So that's what I'm, um, I'm going to do the needle drop with. One of the things that you are going to notice, so if you're used to modern classical vocal uh, performances, one thing that you're going to notice when you when you listen to Mary Anderson or really to anyone from from the earlier uh, half of the 20th century is the vibrato. Her vibrato is incredibly powerful and remarkably precise and concise. And one of the reasons so this is this is there's a there's a lot of ideas about why there was a sort of stylistic shift. So the difference between an early 20th century female classical vocalist singing with a little bit more of a pronounced and steady vibrato compared to a modern soprano singing with a more varied and a little bit a lighter vibrato. Part of that comes down to, in my opinion, is um, early recording methods. Uh, and this can be found in other solo instruments uh, for classical music as well. Fritz Kreisler had the violinist, legendary violinist from the first half of the 20th century. And he was a superstar soloist, and his vibrato is a lot more pronounced than if you see like a modern violinist, an Anna Sophie Mutter or somebody like that, where vibrato is going to be less pronounced. Vibrato done right will actually increase the audibility and the power, the perceived power of the notes. Uh, Marian Anderson's voice was so incredible and her vibrato was so precise that it allowed her voice on early 78 recordings, it allowed her voice to come across through less than ideal playback situations with a, a purity and 
clarity that it would not have otherwise uh, achieved in the, in that recorded playback. For me, every time I put this record on, it takes me it takes me thirty seconds to maybe two minutes to readjust to that, and then you hear the subtlety with which Marianne Anderson is using the vibrato. So, uh, in a beautiful held tone, it will start out with her powerful and consistent vibrato, and then she'll stretch the frequency of the vibrato out a bit, uh, and then bring it back home uh, over that held note. And the astounding range of Marian Anderson and the sort of perfection of tone and the beauty of every part of her vocal range is just astounding. I don't know any other singer that has ever come close to, to anything like, uh, like her range. She didn't do that much opera. She, she, she sang a mix of genres. She sang a lot of spirituals and she sang a lot of uh, individual arias and sort of concertized versions of operatic arias uh, or uh, liturgical style music such as the, some of these Bach cantatas, things like that. I'm not exactly, I'm not sure why she didn't do more opera aside from the fact that maybe she, it wasn't uh, open to her. So she was performing in concerts as early as the 20s and was touring quite widely in the 30s uh, and 40s. She had, in 1939, her most famous concert came about in Washington, D.C. She was originally hoping to perform at Constitution Hall in Washington, D.C., uh, which was a, a hall controlled, it was built and controlled by the Daughters of the American Revolution. And Washington, D.C., the city of Washington, D.C. was a segregated city and Constitution Hall was a white-only performance venue. And so, and the Daughters of the Revolution were not interested uh, in breaking that rule for even for someone as, uh, as incredible as Marian Anderson. The then First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, who was a member of the Daughters of the American Revolution, resigned from the group and with the help of the NAACP and a number of other uh, groups arranged for a, a huge outdoor concert at the Lincoln Memorial. Uh, and that was a very famous uh, concert broadcast live on television to millions. But even after that, so that was 1939, even after that, she was not invited to the Metropolitan Opera in New York City uh, to sing with them until the mid 50s, um, over a decade later, and she was the first black musician to sing at the Metropolitan Opera, Opera. and she only did it once. Uh, and it was, you know, towards the end of her career. Uh, but anyway, this is, uh, all of her stuff is brilliant. There's a lot of uh, releases of hers that are more specifically religious music, gospels and spirituals and such. Uh, but this is, this one, I, like I said, I've seen a lot. Uh, it's widely available and it is, it's stunning. It's an easy, way to open the door uh, into the, to the brilliance of a great singer. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you at the next video.